Dear colleagues, with the adoption of the standard operating procedures, we have taken a big step forward in meeting the expectations of member states, but also many of us inside the United Nations family that are looking for a more results-focused, issue-based and also network and team-based approach to delivering the services that member states and our partners are looking for. By committing ourselves to these standard operating procedures, we are also trying to take a next step in being fit for purpose for what we expect to be not only in the year 2015 to be an intense negotiation of the post-2015 development agenda, but also to be prepared for the rollout that will begin next year with a new set of sustainable development goals, with a whole series of challenges that we are confronting daily in our operations at country level, but also regionally and internationally be it the issues of economic progress, of inequality, of poverty reduction, but also issues of sustainability, industrialization, infrastructure development, time and again point to the need that we need to join forces as a UN family in order to deliver a better result. Member States have clearly high expectations towards the UN in terms of delivering as one. And I think our experience in recent years has actually proven that we are, given the right conditions, perfectly capable of working as a joined up team. All this is not to pretend that there will not be discontinuities, there will not be tensions and sometimes also contradictory signals. In our reality in the United Nations Environment Programme, we operate as a regionally based and globally mandated institution as part of the United Nations family. Sometimes trying to reconcile what is a mandate that is developed at the level of a conference of the parties of a multilateral environmental agreement may not immediately translate into a clear mandate at country level and yet commitments that countries make at the global level are also part of our mandate and obligation to then engage at the country level. For many of you similar challenges will exist and whether it is the budgetary and operational continuity that we are looking for in terms of delivering as one at the country level or whether it is also the different signals that we receive from our governance bodies when it comes to the global results-based program of work that each of one is accountable for. But I think we have seen also in the discussions uh, led by the Secretary General, led through also debates in the United Nations Development Group, the High Level Committee on Programs and also the High Level Committee on Management, that from within the system itself there is a great demand for us to provide greater coherence, to take away some of the obstacles that often have stood in the way of us working as one team and ultimately to deliver a more sustainable and also more effective and results-based set of services to our clients, our member states. But even beyond the member states' focus, it is also our partners with whom we work that are looking to us as a United Nations system to make ourselves more fit for purpose. Working with us is not always easy, just as we also struggle as staff members inside the organizations of the United Nations family to live up to some of the aspirations and goals and objectives that are set in terms of performance and results-based delivery when many of the systems and even incentives are not aligned with such objectives. One can stand back and say, well, until these reforms take place, we cannot deliver as one. I think we all know that this would be the wrong response. It is in this context that the standard operating procedures provide us both with a set of parameters within which we are now committing ourselves to work but also the direction in which we must reform the way we deliver. Inside the universe of the United Nations Environment Programme, with our both regional presence, uh, in some countries selective country presence, but above all a scientific, normative and operational mandate, we are extremely keen to be part of this delivering as one. The environmental sustainability dimension of sustainable development and the broader development agenda cannot be achieved without being both part of country teams, being integral to also assisting country teams with the ability and the objectives of delivering on environmental objectives through the many different mandates that we all represent. Indeed, environmental sustainability is a mandate that belongs to all of us in the UN system and it is our responsibility in UNEP through, for instance, the engagement with country teams to provide the kind of specialist advice, scientific analysis, operational support that will allow all of us together to deliver better and more. I hope that despite some of the challenges that we will inevitably face, all of you will feel encouraged by the issuing of these standard operating procedures. We'll see them as an opportunity to experiment, to drive our own understanding of how things can be done better further, and that over time this is also viewed as a living document that can evolve and must indeed evolve. Thank you once again to all of those who have worked on these standard operating procedures and on behalf of the United Nations Environment Programme, 
we want to commit fully to actually making these the new DNA of how we operate at country level. Indeed, working as a team and working in partnership is fundamental not only to the mandate of UNIT, but I think to the work of all of our agencies, funds and programs. Thank you.